Hey guys, I'm back here with a little bit of downtime um, in the shop. Uh, recently just had a, my first child, so I figured I'd share some things with you since I can't really be moving along on the Jaguar like I'd hoped. But <clears throat> anyway, what I want to share with you guys is I've got a lot of comments uh, with how to planish sheet metal. Um, I'm gonna do a three-part series, so there's gonna be three videos. The first part is gonna be old school hammer and dolly. Second part is gonna be basically weld it up and do the same thing. You hammer and dolly a little bit, but then you go over to the English wheel and you planish it. And then the third one will basically be you eliminate this and the dolly for the most part and you use the planishing hammer. But this way, this is the most affordable way. This is the the way that most people can do it without the access to some of the tooling that I have. So <clears throat> we're gonna start. There's two pieces here. I have them clamped together. Thing I want to share with you guys is when you guys cut, when you guys make these panels for cars, whatever you're making, you want to make them long, three quarters of an inch long. It doesn't have to be real long. When you go to make your final cut, you're gonna scribe it or one panel, you know, you're gonna start with one and then scribe, and you want a perfect cut. If not, you're gonna to wanna to use a Vixen file, a body file, and you're gonna to wanna to file that metal to where there's no air gaps. And the reason why is if this is the panel, right, and there's an air gap where my index fingers are and my pinkies are. So this welded fine, it pulled, it's gonna pull just a little bit. But what happens is when you start welding these two together, now it's moving the panel this way. Well then, when it moves that way, your gap on the other side, now when you go to weld it and fill that air gap, now it's gonna pull again. And that metal is gonna keep doing this. So what happens is when you do that, it's gonna start puckering. And it'll pucker your sheet metal and you'll be like, man, what is, it's so much distortion. So <clears throat> you wanna scribe it, cut it, file it, and you want the perfect match with no air gap. If you have an air gap, it's not a huge deal. You can planish it out. It's just gonna be more planishing in that area. <clears throat> but I'm gonna show you, you always start on one end of the panel. And the reason why is because when you start welding or tacking down here, what's gonna happen, it's gonna shrink <clears throat> and it's gonna get tighter and tighter. And if I tack here and I tack my second one, it's gonna pull and it's gonna to wanna to overlap. So you're gonna to go to the hammer and dolly, you're gonna hit your tack welds. It's gonna open back up where you need it. And you finish, get all your tacks where it's totally smooth. Then you can come in and I was taught this from an old school guy is you weld one inch, skip three inches for heat transfer. The heat's gonna distort the panel regardless. So the faster you can get that or the better you can control your heat, you could do it that way. So <clears throat> I'm gonna TIG weld this all on the video and I'm gonna show you, I use 023 MIG wire, 70S6. Um, it's small, it, it melts at a lot lower rate. And then I'm obviously gonna use my Miller welder behind me, my Synchrowave Wave 180 um, SD. Uh, I use a, <clears throat> most of the time when I'm, doing the sheet metal, <clears throat> most of the time <clears throat> I use a six, uh, sometimes I even drop down to a five, but I use a 16th tungsten. You could use an 045 tungsten, but I use a gas lens. And the gas lens keeps it clean and it really focuses on the weld. So let me get this tacked so you guys can kind of see and then we'll go from there. The amps that I usually run my machine at on this Miller is roughly anywhere between 48 and 50 amps for this 18 gauge sheet metal. So if this if this uh, helps you guys any, uh, hopefully it does. Uh, <clears throat> it's just where I like to weld it, but every welder is different. So 
I'm gonna tack on this end and I'm gonna see where it lays out and I'll go from there. So I got one tap and that's just gonna start pulling it. So on this small panel, I'm gonna jump to the center and if it doesn't move, I can do it. But on a bigger panel, you're gonna have to start at one end. This panel with these clamps in here, it probably won't let it scissor action and slide on top. So. So there's no air gap in between. So I'm gonna pop this one off. I'm gonna come over here right to the other side of the edge and I can clamp it down. And this is just because this is a smaller panel. <clears throat> so everything can be butted up and then I'm gonna do the final inside of it. I got it tack welded. As you can see, it's burned through on the back. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna weld this. I'll probably weld there, there, and then I'll kind of let it cool a little bit, and I'll come in and finish welding it. Um, I did, this machine does not have a pulsator, but I do pulsate when I do sheet metal with my foot. It's pedal down, and that's just gonna take practice. So. As you can see, it's starting to shrink. So it's starting to build that, that dome or that pucker. And that's just the natural remedy of when you're welding sheet metal. <clears throat> um, the reason I pulsate it is so it gets a good penetration when I do throttle down, but I, I wanna keep the heat distortion to a minimum, so I fly back, back off. So I'm going to finish welding this out, and then I'll show you the planishing side of it. All right, guys. <clears throat> so I got it welded, and it is distorted, just like what we all thought it would happen. So you're going to use, there's so many different dollies out there you could use your preference. I got a small ball pain, and I like it because I can direct my hit exactly where I want it. Um, I've been using this. I picked this up off of... Mike Walden from Walden Speed Shop, and it's been working really well for me. I've, I've done been doing it for three or four years now. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> you wanna place it, this is gonna be a flat panel, so I want it flat. If it was curved, that's why you use the you know different shapes for. So I just place the dolly underneath, and you're gonna stretch this back out. And so I'm gonna use the flat end, and I'm just gonna hit it and control it directly on the weld. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna smash that weld back out because when it shrunk. And I tend to look at it from where the burn line is. That all shrunk too, that got hot. And it's probably another, I'm gonna say three eighths 
of an inch past that is where the metal started pulling. So you're gonna have to stretch all that back out. So. And I'm just going to rotate it around so I can cover more ground, but I can control it with this hammer. Obviously, I have numerous hammers. It's just your preference, but for doing this and then in small areas where I could really focus on planishing, I, I like to use this hammer. The biggest deal is to make sure that this stays flat. If this starts doing this, you're going to start getting divots in your panel. So, as you can see, now it went the other way. So I probably overstretched a little bit, but it's gonna apply some, some heat when I go to like knock down the grind a little bit or grind it a little bit. So I'll just keep moving along so you guys can see this, how it actually works. When you go to grind, this is one thing that a lot of people don't understand. If this one side here is a thinner sheet you don't want to make it any thinner so what you want to do you want to when you touch down with your grinder you want to go from the thick side to the thin side and as you do you want to roll it up when you roll it up what you're doing is you're letting that stay thick thin or however thin it is and you're taking some off a little bit here which isn't a big deal so i'm going to do it backwards because the way i'm positioned and sitting so i'm going to do it this way Okay, so I just wanted to knock down the top. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, and you can always get to the, if you can get to the back, it's great. If not, it is what it is. So on a bigger panel, you would slide this. And what it's gonna do, I might be able to do it here. I'll pull it down. You're gonna slide it just like this. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, there's some scratch marks. That's obviously high, this is obviously low. So, what we're gonna do, get it here, put this back underneath, and we're gonna plant it just, just a little more. slapping file this one's basically like a normal file but it's bent and stuff and it has grooves in it so if you could find a low spot which I usually use some dicum uh, fluid 
sometimes and you just, well, so you just spray the Dicom uh, layout fluid on there and it'll dry. And when you file it, it'll show you your high spots and your low spots. Okay? So if you have a low spot, you want to put your dolly on the bottom side of it, and then you'll slap it. What it'll do, it'll shrink that panel back up. They do have slapping spoons, you could use those too, and all it is is just moving metal around. And a lot of this, I do use sandpaper on a block, and that'll take this off too. Um, this is kind of a little difficult. Being as small as the camera is. Okay. that way too. Sometimes you can't, so it's a pain. But all I'm going to do Obviously in this process you'd put more dicom fluid on it, sand it, and this is a time consuming process. So from this stage, it's pretty much pretty pretty much there. The die comb is what you're gonna get all the small stuff out with. So if I have a small ding in the center, that's where I'm gonna find the low spot. And I'm gonna grab my file, and I'm gonna bring it up. Obviously, you'd file it until it came out perfectly smooth. So, now that you have this, so you could see where I start and stop. On the edges, that little dark line, dark line, that's the weld line. That's the weld on the back. So, with that being like that, I'm going to smooth it out a little bit with the slapping file and a hammer on dolly kind of shrinks it. You want to work around a low spot and it'll bring it up. Hammer on dolly will stretch stuff. So I'm just going to real lightly go over it.
out of the DA. And I'm gonna knock it down so you can see it. As you can see, that's been welded. And it's still a little hot, low over here that I could, you know, keep working. But for this video, it'd be perfect. And that's what I wanted to show you guys is this is the basic principle, the beginning of if you're learning how to do this, this is how old school and this is how we started. So <clears throat> if, hope you guys like this video, stay tuned because the next way I'll use the hammer and the dolly in the English wheel. And even at this point where this is now, because it's flat on the bottom, flat on top, I can go over to the English wheel and I could smooth this out. So you can't do it right after you weld it because it's so big, you could, but the biggest deal with the English wheel, you have to make sure that your anvils are hardened. If not, it will pit your English wheel anvils like no tomorrow. So, at this stage, you can go over to the English wheel and smooth out the panel to where your weld line blends with what you've done. The next video will obviously be without these tools, and basically right after I weld it, you go over to the planishing hammer and you just keep working it until you get it where you want it and you're blending out. And see, so with this up, you could feel it a little bit. I need to come out here and stretch a little bit, but the English wheel will take care of that and I will blend these two together. So, <clears throat> hope this guy's, this, you know, works for you guys and now you guys can see the whole process of what planishing is. This is how all the guys you see on TV doing it. Um, it's the correct way. We don't lay on another piece of metal and spot weld it when it's rusted. I mean, we cut it out, we weld it in to where it looked like it was never welded. We make fenders door skins, you name it, we do it all this way. So, hope you guys like this video. Stay tuned for the next series, which will be probably in a day or two. Um, with same process, we're gonna go to the English wheel. The third one, obviously, like I said, the planishing hammer, and we can do that as well. So, stay tuned. If you're not a subscriber, click the link below. Go over to my other social media websites, Facebook, Instagram, um, and see what we're doing. Obviously, like I said, we're kind of down a little bit right now, having a kid and stuff like that. So it's kind of, everything's slow going, but we're starting to pick back up. So I wanted to share this with you guys. Stay tuned. And uh, in the meantime, try to find some scrap metal and practice. Practice makes perfect.